Congresswoman Nancy Mace plays an outsized role for just a second-term lawmaker, and she's no stranger to controversy. You might not know the groundbreaking path that brought her to Congress. That's also informing a stark warning that she has for her own party. Here's the latest in my series, Badass Women of Washington. Yep, I can hear you. She's only been in Congress two and a half years. Good afternoon, and thank you. Yet Nancy Mace is a backbencher with a big national profile. You have to say enough is enough. And I'm a constant afraid. cable presence with an innate sense of how to make news as a Republican from a South Carolina battleground district. I'm pro-life. I have a fantastic pro-life voting record, but I also understand that we cannot be assholes to women. She first made national news at age 21 as the first woman to graduate from the Citadel Military College. I saw the Citadel as a path for me to be able to get my life together, but also looking back at it now, it was a place for me to prove to myself that I would not quit. She dropped out of high school before the Citadel, she says, largely because of trauma from being raped at age 16. When that happens, you don't blame the man that does that. You blame yourself. Were my shorts too short? Was my shirt too tight? Why did that happen? Why did that person think it was okay to attack me in that way? Obviously, now that you are a grown woman, a very successful yeah. one, you recognize that that feeling of shame, that blaming yourself mm -hmm. is off base. Sometimes. I mean, I Do think you still telling, blame yourself? Well, I think, you know, telling my story got me to get through that. But I will tell you, being a victim of rape, you don't ever get over it. Sometimes emotionally, I'm like a 16-year-old girl. I get angry, I wear my heart on my sleeve, and I can be uh, very vocal about things because I still feel that shame and that anger. You know it's not your fault, but there's still shame about it. She went public about her rape during an abortion debate while serving in the South Carolina State House. Victims like me. It's why she is so vocal about exceptions for abortion bans now. As a Republican woman today in 2023, this is a very lonely place to be because I feel like that I'm the only woman on our side of the aisle advocating for things that all women should care about. No woman wants to go to the doctor and make the decision that she's going to have an abortion. Nobody wants that. And what are we doing to to ensure that she doesn't have to make that decision? What are we doing about the foster care system? What are we doing about child care? We're doing none of those things. Without changing what you just described, mm -hmm. are Republicans doomed in moderate districts like yours? I think they're walking the plank. Mace certainly has eye-rolling critics who hear that and look at her voting record and see a disconnect. She largely votes with her party, even on bills where abortion rights are at stake. She insists she's extracted changes from party leaders. But I think I get labeled a flip-flopper unfairly because of that. I have, I have my own ideology that I believe in. I'll take the vote. That doesn't mean I want to take the vote. I have been very effective at, at trying to push the ball, not always, um, but doing the best that I can. I'm only one person, and a lot of times I'm doing it alone and by myself. I would love to have more folks join us, too. There's also the issue of the former president. On the one hand, she boasts about beating a Trump-endorsed primary challenger. We won resoundingly. We won by almost 10 points. On the other, she goes on TV sounding a lot like Trump's staunchest allies. There are two tiers of justice. It's a double standard. Hillary wasn't treated the same way. Leveling accusations about the Biden family. Racketeering, RICO, money laundering. One of the most corrupt presidents. Made a lot of money off of Joe Biden. Sometimes when I hear you, I'm like, oh, okay. That sounds like the Nancy Mace who I saw mm -hmm. and heard on some issues, but other times you sound like the people who you say make you a very lonely Republican. <laughs> well, it, will, it is absolutely lonely. It's by issue for me, you know, and I want to call it like I see it. And sometimes I'm going to be over here and then sometimes I'm going to be over here. And it can, it can feel like ping pong sometimes that I'm trying to be consistent. And it's not you being a very savvy politician and <laughs> going out there and pushing hard in some areas, but also yeah. doing a little base maintenance in others. I would say I don't do anything on purpose. 
That was on display during this ad-libbed line at a prayer breakfast. My fiance tried to pull me by my waist over this morning in bed, and I was like, no, baby, we don't got time for that. He goes, did she say what I think she just said? Like, yep. <laughs> we laugh about it inside the office sometimes. Like, we, we just, nothing happens on purpose here. It's all an accident. Something Mace is intentional about? Being a divorced mom with two teenagers. It's very challenging, but I could not do it without their father. And I do have tremendous guilt as a mom for being a working mom. I talk to so many women who share that, and I think I'm not a helicopter mom. Like, I, I want my kids to be as independent as possible, but I, I do too much for them. I hold their hand a little too much, and I'm in this phase of this season of life where I'm saying, oh no, you're, gonna, you're going on your own. Like, there's a purpose in my life to do this. And again, I think it goes back to my early traumatic life experiences, this fight, the things that I wanna make. Women and people who've been wronged, I wanna make it right. And I'm grateful that my family, that they recognize that as well. I couldn't do that without it.